I'm on my way to meet someone who doesn't want to be found. A woman who, for nearly two decades, was one of the faces of Russian state propaganda. Jana Agalagova was one of the stars of Russia's Channel One, the A-list news anchor who reported from all over the world. And then, soon after the invasion of Ukraine, she resigned and, in a press conference in Paris, denounced the war and the Russian government. At the end of the press conference, the star TV reporter disappeared from view for pretty obvious reasons. Jana Agalagova knows full well what can happen to critics of the Kremlin. Ever since she resigned, Newsnight has been trying to secure an interview. At first, she was very hesitant. But yesterday, we got the call, come to Amsterdam. She agreed to meet in a room at the back of a city centre restaurant. She knows she faces difficult questions about her part in Putin's propaganda machine. Do you ever think that you waited too long to speak out? After all, you know, the clues were there. They were pretty pretty big clues, weren't they? Well, my life splits in two parts, before February 24 and after. Um, but I'm happy the choice I made. Probably I should have made it before, much, much before. I was trying to stepping down always more and more and more. It started for me in 2005. Uh, it was the second term of Putin presidency. We show this person every day on daily basis. Anything he did, and she shake a hand, he traveled somewhere, he took a tea with somebody. It was the reason to show him on news show. And understood that I am responsible, that I'm responsible with my images on it. I didn't want to do it. And I said, okay, I don't want to leave my job. I like being a journalist. I will step down. I will move to Paris. It's a great city. And uh, I can avoid the propaganda. But when, in 2014, Jana was reporting from the United States, she couldn't avoid the propaganda. Russia had annexed Crimea, and there was bitter condemnation at the UN Security Council in New York. That was tough, because I had to listen only a Russian point of view, only from Russian perspective, and cut all other uh, opinion or other part of discussion, uh, it was cut off, definitely, and had a very strict uh, directive to put on the first place Russian representative, what he said, and basically he had to have the last word in my reporting. It's like you live in two worlds. Even now, when you're watching news in Russia, sometimes I do it, it's like two different planets. In one planet, there is ruins and total disaster, death and tragedy. In another wo world, it's, um, it's a, a Russian militaries that was cheered by local population with flowers. And this is only victories. And there is only something positive and great. In these two worlds, don't mix up. And it's blow my mind how they do it. This is incredible, how they brainwashed their population. This was one of the most puzzling aspects of meeting Jana. They brainwashed the public, she kept saying. But to many people, she had a big personal responsibility for the propaganda. Did people tell you what to say? How did the control work? How did the um, information flow work? Were you given instructions of how to report? Well, you're looking for simple solution, that there is someone came and said, from this moment, and, <laughs> and we're going to call it like this. No, it's just, um, it's just on daily basis, on every minute basis that, that is coming. So we follow the general line. We didn't call it a war, the war. We call it a special operation. We had to do it. Otherwise, this piece, this is TV, it's easy, it will be cut off 
and the person who said it intentionally will be punished or will be removed from certain subject, he cannot cover certain subject, or will be punished uh, financially because our salary consisted in two parts, salary itself and sort of premium. If you did something wrong, premium, which is 40 percent, will be cut it off. Jana was pessimistic that anything would now stop Vladimir Putin and also skeptical that sanctions against Russian people like the ban on Russian players at Wimbledon will do anything but convince Russians that the West has turned against them rather than their government. This is not the way. I don't know. I mean, from one, from one side, you don't allow Russian sportsmen to participate in international competition. And from the other hand, you are paid for Russian gas and rubles. What is the logic? Not all Russians are bad guys. There are many people who don't want this war, who never voted for Putin, but they're blocked. They're like hostages, many of them. For many years, the people in Russia trusted you to tell them the news. What would your message be to them now? Switch off TV. Switch off it. Because it is brainwashing nation. Just don't listen. Find other sources of information. Look at internet and open your heart. The war is an evil. The war is death not there on that territory where war is, but also in Russia, till the Kuril Islands. It's everywhere. Stop watching TV.